Welcome to the first episode of Taking Lessons From, where we talk about the lessons, good or bad, that we can take from video games. I'm Nea Fosho of Peach Cobbler Studios, and we'll be starting off with a simpler grouping of games. The set of games we'll be focusing on first will be roguelikes. For those who are unaware, a roguelike is a genre of games characterized by its dungeon crawling nature and permanent death mechanics. Throughout the course of this grouping, we'll be focusing on how there is replayability in death, how to prevent replays becoming monotonous, and how and when to convey information to the player. Today's game will be FTL, Faster Than Light. It is a sci-fi roguelike where you are a spaceship attempting to deliver a message containing the Rebels' weakness to the Federation HQ. Of course, the Rebels are right on your tail, and the Rebel Mothership is about to destroy HQ by the time you can get there. The game can be broken down into three mechanical parts, those being the ship-to-ship -ship combat, the text-based decisions, and the inter-system movement. Though many of the times the text in the game will be world-building, there is also times you must make a choice. Sometimes it's to intervene with a conflict, maybe it's to risk your ship going into an asteroid field to save someone. Each choice has potential consequences and rewards, but because of the random outcome, there is not necessarily a right or wrong choice. Seeing the same text box twice, even if in the same playthrough, will not necessarily yield the same results. Much of the time, those text boxes will lead to a conflict, with a ship hovering around the same system as you. On the surface, the combat is simplistic enough. Both you and the enemy will charge up your weapons until they can be fired. You may select targets for the weapons, whether while charging or once fully charged, and they will fire at that specified point on the enemy's ship. Where it gets more complex is how you choose that point. Do you want to aim at their weapon systems, that way they can't fire back? Maybe you want to knock out their shields and make future volleys more successful. Or you could even take out their engine or helm, so that way they can't run away. Each choice could lead to victory or defeat. Of course, whether it is combat or purely text-based, there is only one encounter per beacon. This is where the traveling system comes into play. Once you are safe, or enough time has passed for your engine to charge, you may jump to nearby systems. And if you are at a place with an exit beacon, you can also jump to the next sector to get closer to your goal. Selecting your destination can be quite important. There could be stores to buy gear and supplies from, or distress beacons where you might be able to help. There is also potential environmental hazards like nebulas and solar flares that you may or may not be able to see coming. All this while navigating towards the exit beacon and eventually the HQ of the Federation. Now that you are familiar with the game's mechanics, let's crack into how it was designed. As I will be noting with the other roguelikes that I'll be covering, this game has three main pillars that it follows, those being variability, rewarding player knowledge, and difficulty. These pillars give the game the ability to be played repeatedly even though death starts you over. Variability is the largest of these factors. Even though FTL has only a moderate sized scope, the elements of the game show it can be played in a number of ways. You can start with not only different ship layouts, but different ships entirely, which can change starting systems, crew, and gear. Along the way, you will encounter many different text boxes, which can lead to more crew, damage to your hull, or maybe even free gear. As these events, along with shop layouts, are randomized for every playthrough, it is possible to pick a new build or playstyle every time you start anew. Although FTL can do a lot with not much, it is still possible to memorize all the variabilities. However, this does not ruin the game. Knowing you could eventually memorize all the possible outcomes, FTL includes special conditions to bypass the chance at a negative outcome. Even without these, the player that knows the event can better decide if the reward is worth the risk. But even knowledge is not a guarantee to success. Balancing the game to ensure a beginner or someone playing more casually has only a slightly worse chance than someone experienced is a difficult task that FTL manages. Though it does have a difficulty setting, an experienced player could still fail on easy while a beginner might be able to succeed on hard. Now that the design principles for a roguelike are being understood, we can start to apply this to a game of our own. We will want to create categories filled with small variations that combine into a large array of variability. Using a player death as a restart point, we can reward a player's knowledge of the game while still giving difficulty. Next week, I will be showing just how we can get started on such a game. Though our recipe is not yet complete, baking an interactive experience takes time. Hope to see you in the developer's kitchen!